Okay, hey everybody, this is part two to the video. This is all about recording your vocals. And this isn't just hip hop or R&B, this could be any type of vocals, whether you're a singer or, or a screamer in a hard rock band. Um, all these things could, could still be very useful. Just a couple uh, tips. Uh, the, the first thing that I recommend is something that uh, very rarely uh, do I see uh, hip-hop artists or even R&B singers uh, do, which is just do a practice run. You know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of singers, they need to warm up their voice, and so they'll do a few, a few practice runs just through the song uh, just to help warm their voice up. But what this also does is it, it lets the engineer know uh, the arrangement of the song and, and, and uh, what, what parts there are as far as uh, verses and choruses and bridge and, and how loud the singer is going to sing or how quiet or, or things like that. So they, so they, they could be adjusting their, their stuff while the uh, singer or, or rapper is, is warming up. A lot of uh, up and coming or inexperienced uh, rappers do is is they don't know how how far or how close they should be from the microphone. So what I'm going to have Dion do is is get up here and first. A lot of people they think that in order to hear themselves better, they need to get real close up to the mic. And what this does is it it creates what's called a proximity effect, which is a lot of uh, low end and uh, muffled, almost the, the muddiness that comes from uh, being too close to the mic. Whereas if you took a step back, you know, this, this is uh, a, um, a good place to start because now all the air that he's breathing from, from when he's rapping isn't, isn't going right onto the mic, it's uh, being dispersed a little bit and stop by the pop filter. And so this, is, this would be a good place for him to kind of um, experiment in just his, how, his, how his voice sounded. And then if he took it even further back, then it would be a little too quiet and it would sound a little too, too thin and he'd probably be um, having trouble hearing himself in the headphones, so he would probably be straining his voice so you want to definitely find that that comfort zone of how close or how far you want to be from the mic and if you're having trouble hearing yourself in the headphones then you could ask the engineer to turn you up or turn down the the beat or or the instrumentals because um, you definitely want to have that nice balance and then um, another uh, tip or trick is uh, wearing one headphone uh, off your ear slightly so you can hear yourself in the room as well as you can you can also hear yourself in the headphones through the uh, uh, through the console and then uh, <clears throat> another thing I wanted to talk about is is having a, a clear idea of your arrangement um, you know Especially with uh, you know hip hop and R and B, um, you know there's there's songs that have a traditional verse, chorus, verse, bridge, you know chorus, outro, but then there's some that is just a solid you know verse, um, or you know or uh, it might not have a bridge, and um, so you want to have an idea of like the the sections of of your song. Um, and then you want to you want to know if you want to record your whole part together, or if you want to do it by do it by sections. And um, you know it all depends on the artist really and how they like to record. Some like to record the whole way through, and then do their backups and ad libs. And then some like to focus on just the chorus, stack that. And then we could fly that into all the other places the chorus goes, and then they could work on their verse and stack that and do their ad libs, and then go to the next verse. And then that way they're only thinking about just that section, and it helps them, you know, especially for those of 
uh, artists that you know memorize it or are just trying to trying to go off the top of their head, then only focusing on certain sections might might help. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Dion? Uh, yeah. So essentially, um, most times artists who have their lyrics written down or have it in their notes on their phone or memorize it, which is going to be the best route to take. Um, you want to have an idea or jot it down somewhere to where you know where your lyrics are going to go, where your backups are going to go, where your chorus is going to go, and how the idea of the song is going to be in your head. If you don't have anything, you just have a beat and you have no idea and you just want to freestyle, especially if you're not a person that can freestyle, um, that is not going to be good for, again, your time as well as the engineer's time and it will waste a lot of allotted minutes that could be fixed ahead of time. You want to prepare and then you want to ex execute your idea that you want to jot down because it's, it's very, very important when you create a song to have an idea first and then after that executed by jotting down notes, jotting down your lyrics, memorizing your lyrics and then when you come in you're prepared so in a way, it's like when you cook. Um, if you're cooking, you want to have the ingredients. You want to have the season that you want to put on top of it. Um, but ultimately, you want to have the, the, the food. So if you have chicken and you need to prepare chicken for eight minutes, and then you need to cook it, and then after that, you need to put season on it. Then after that, you can have the sauce. If you do have sauce on it, that would be like your ad-libs. That would be like uh, any backups or anything extra that you want to input then you can do that. But you want to prepare it. Um, all this comes with preparation and time. Um, you'll hear me saying that a lot. But as an artist, you can't come in here freely and willy-nilly because, again, you have to spend money. You have to use the engineer's time who's, who's helping you out. Um, and be mindful of that and be considerate. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, he touched on a really important uh, subject, and that's rappers that just want to go to the, the studio in, in freestyle. I highly recommend not doing that unless unless you're a great freestyler and you're used to freestyling with your friends and you really really feel like your best stuff comes out when you're freestyling then I would say okay maybe do a couple takes of freestyling but I really recommend coming to the studio having a a clear idea of of your song, what you're gonna say. Don't be rewriting stuff in the studio. Like you should have been practicing uh, these rhymes, you know, for for a while now. And, um, so and the studio is not a hangout spot to where everyone comes in and has a good time. You can do that on your own time and amongst your friends or at school. Um, but when you come into a studio, any studio session, um, you want to be professional. Even if this is not going to be your profession, you want to treat the situation accordingly. You're paying for it. The engineer is using their time for a service that you would like when they could be learning more about engineering or you could spend your time outside of the studio learning more on how to write or researching um, hip-hop in general or whether it's country or whether it's R&B, whatever it may be, the genre. But when you come to the studio, you want to come prepared and you want to come to work. Um, even if it's not going to be your profession, um, it, is a, it is a line of work for the engineer or the studio because they are getting money, they are doing a service for you, so you want to treat it as so. Very true. And so finally, after you record all your vocals, you do all your backups, your ad-libs, put in all your samples, and now it's the fun part where you actually get to mix it and put all the effects on. And this is probably the most artist's favorite part because this is when they get to, you know, mess with, with mess with all the effects. And I would, I would wait until this portion of the session to, you know, to really start putting putting your ideas out there because, you know, the last thing the engineer wants to hear is all these ideas and all these places to cut the beat when you know you're still trying to get a good vocal sound and you're trying to set your levels and everything so now that it's recorded you can go back listen make sure nothing needs to get fixed and then you can start messing around with auto-tune and some echoes and 
and cut the beat and do some stutters and um, you know and then and, and really experiment because because this really is is the fun part and you know the sky's the limit and now you can really um, make some make some ear candy that you know are really gonna uh, impress some people and and uh, try to hook people into to your song you know because no one wants to hear just some boring song now you have to compete with all these commercial songs and so you have to have some cool effects right so I think that's about it as far as this video but thank you all everybody for watching it um, anybody that uh, watches the video you can go to the link at the bottom there's going to be a free PDF uh, that you can download that's got all this information so you can go back and um, check it out reread it make your own notes and uh, help you uh, prepare for your next session um, anybody that signs up for my mailing list you'll automatically get an email to you and uh, hopefully you subscribe and we'll have some more cool videos for you so thank you everybody thank you guys